angle relationships in triangles. Our objective is to find the measure of interior and exterior angles of triangles, as well as apply theorems about the interior and exterior angles of triangles. Who uses this? Surveyors use triangles to make measurements and create boundaries. Let's look at the triangle sum theorem. If you were to add up all the angles of your triangle, it will be 180 degrees. So the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C equals 180 degrees. A vocabulary term. Auxiliary line is a line that is added to a figure to aid in a proof. We're going to need this when trying to prove the triangle sum theorem. So we're handed a triangle and we want to prove that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. To do this we need an auxiliary line. So we draw in our auxiliary line and we're using the fact that we can draw a line parallel to AC through a point. So that would be the parallel postulate. Now if line L and AC are in fact parallel to each other, which they are, we know that angle 1 and angle 4 will be congruent, the same as angle 3 and angle 5. Both are using the alternate interior angles theorem. Well, since they are congruent, all things that are congruent also have equal measures. So by using the definition of congruent angles, we can state that their measures are equal. Next, we have, all right, well, we have a line. We know that a line equals 180 degrees. So the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5 must, in fact, be equal to 180 degrees. We're using a combination of the angle addition postulate and the definition of a straight angle. Once we have these three pieces, we can start substituting. We can substitute angle 1 in for angle 4, angle 3 in for angle 5, and still have it equaling 180 degrees. Let's look at a surveying application. The map of France, commonly used in the 1600s, was significantly revised as a result of a triangulation land survey. The diagram shows part of the survey map used. Use the diagram to find the indicated angle measures. So we want to find the measure of angle N, K, M. So with N, K, M, we know that a triangle is 180 degrees. So we can simply take 180 and subtract 88 and 48 from that to get ourselves 44 degrees. So that means this angle is 44 degrees. The next angle it's asking for is J, L, K. J, L, K. Well, we have a triangle here as well, but we're going to need to know what this angle measure is first. To do so, we can state that a line is 180 degrees, just like in the last proof. So we have 180 minus 104 plus 44, which is going to give us 32 degrees. We're not done yet. We want to go one step further. So now that we have that that's, 100, or that's 32 degrees, we know a triangle is 180, so we can take 180 and subtract the quantity 70 plus 32, and we end up with 78 degrees. Let's look at a couple corollaries. A corollary is a theorem whose proof follows directly from another theorem. These are all following directly from the triangle sum theorem. All right, so the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. So D and E together are going to have to add up to 90, because 90 and 90 make 180 degrees. Second one is the measure of each angle of an equiangular triangle is 60 degrees. Well, if a triangle is 180 degrees, divide that by 3, and each angle must be 60 degrees. Let's find angle measures in right triangles. One of the acute angles in a right triangle measures 22.9 degrees. What is the measure of the other acute angle? Well, since it's a right triangle, we know the two acute angles must together add up to 90, 
So we can simply say 90 minus 22.9 and receive our other acute angle, which in this case is 67.1 degrees. Let's look at a few more vocabulary terms. The interior is the set of all points inside the figure. The exterior is the set of all points outside the figure. An interior angle is formed by two sides of the triangle, and an exterior angle is formed by one side of the triangle and an extension of an adjacent side. So this angle 4 is an exterior angle, whereas angle 1, 2, and 3 are interior angles. Now, to be a little more specific, you have something called a remote interior angle. A remote interior angle is an interior angle that is not adjacent to the exterior. So, angle 4 is an exterior angle. Its remote interior angles are 1 and 2, the ones that are not next to angle 4. There's a theorem that goes with this. If you were to add your two remote interior angles, so the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, that's going to give you the measure of angle 4. Let's practice this. We want to find what the measure of angle J is. To do so, we're going to need to know what X is. Well, the remote interior angles theorem states that if we add our two remote interior angles together, it's going to equal the measure of our exterior. So 126 is going to equal 6X minus 1 plus 5X plus 17. So now we can just simply combine like terms. So we have 6x and 5x, which gives us 11x. And we have negative 1 and 17, which gives us 16. Subtract 16 from both sides. And we end up with 110 equals 11x. Then we can divide by 11 on both sides, leaving us with 10 equals x. Since we're looking for the measure of angle j, we can simply, simply substitute 10 in for x, so we have 5 times 10 plus 17, and so 50 plus 17 gives us 67 degrees. Take a moment and pause the video and try these next two on your own. Now that you've had a chance to try these next two on your own, let's try them together. So our two remote interior angles, we're going to add them together. And they're going to equal our exterior angle, which is 48 degrees. So combining like terms, we have 5y plus 3 equals 48. Subtract 3 from both sides, we have 5y equals 45. And then we can divide by 5 on both sides, leaving us with 9. Now, we wanted to know what the measure of angle M is, so we want to substitute 9 in for Y. So we have 3 times 9 plus 1, which gives us 28 degrees. Let's try this next one. We have our two interior angles, or two remote interior angles. So we have 7X plus 6X minus 1 equals our exterior which is 90 degrees. So combining like terms, we have 13x minus 1 equals 90. Add 1 to both sides, we have 13x equals 91. And divide by 13 on both sides, x equals 7. And we wanted the measure of angle L, so we're going to substitute that back in. So we have 6 times 7 minus 1, which is 41 degrees. Let's look at the third angles theorem. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third pair of angles are congruent. So one set of angles, two sets of angles, third set of angles will be congruent because they have to add up to 180 degrees. All right, let's try an example. We know that angle M and R are congruent and N and S are congruent. That means P and T have to be congruent, 
So let's set them equal to each other. So we have 2x squared plus 4x squared minus 32. Oops, sorry, I meant to say equal there. So third angles are equal to each other. So we have 2x squared equals 4x squared minus 32. And then we can start simplifying. So we can subtract 4x from both sides. So we end up with negative 2x squared equals negative 32. Divide both sides by negative 30, or sorry, negative 2. And then we end up with x squared equals 16. And then we can take the square root of both sides. We have x equals 4. So then we could substitute 4 back in. So that, that way we could figure out how much p and t are. They are both supposed to be the same, so we only need to plug it back into one of them. So we have 2 times 4 squared, which gives us 32 degrees. So the measure of angle P and the measure of angle T are both 32 degrees. Take a moment and pause the video and try these next two on your own. Now that you've had a moment to try them on your own, let's try them together. So our third angle's theorem states that both of these must be congruent to each other. So we have 4x squared equals 3x squared plus 25. So subtract 3x squared from both sides. We end up with x squared equals 25. And therefore x equals 5. We could substitute it back in. It doesn't matter which one because they're both going to be equal. So we have 4 times 5 squared which is 100 degrees. Let's try this next one. We have the third angle's theorem once again. So we have 5x minus 11 equals 4x plus 9. We can subtract 4x from both sides. And then we could add 11 to both sides. And then we end up with x equals 20. And now we substitute that back in. So we have 5 times 20 minus 11, which gives us 89 degrees. And since both u and s are 89, we don't need to plug it back into the other one. And that, folks, concludes our video lesson on angle relationships in triangles.